September 19th, Memorial of St. Januarius, Bishop and Martyr. St. Januarius was Bishop of Benevento. Along with his companions, he was martyred at Naples in the persecution of Diocletian. Today, he is especially venerated in the city of Naples. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Faith of our fathers, faith and prayer shall win all nations unto thee, and through the truth that comes from God, mankind shall then indeed be free. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our fathers, we will love both friend and foe in all our strife, and preach thee too as love knows how, by kindly deeds and virtuous life. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Men will hate you because you are mine, but he who perseveres will be saved. Why this tumult among nations, among peoples this useless murmuring? They arise, the kings of the earth. Princes plot against the Lord and his anointed. Come, let us break their fetters. Come, let us cast off their yoke. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord is laughing them to scorn. Then he will speak in his anger. His rage will strike them with terror. It is I who have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will announce the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son. It is I who have begotten you this day. Ask, and I shall bequeath you the nations. Put the ends of the earth in your possession. With a rod of iron you will break them, shatter them like a potter's jar. Now, O kings, understand. Take warning, rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with awe and trembling. Pay him your homage, lest he be angry and you perish. For suddenly his anger will blaze. Blessed are they who put their trust in God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Men will hate you because you are mine, but he who perseveres will be saved. The sufferings of this life cannot be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us in the life to come. In the Lord I have taken my refuge. How can you say to my soul, Fly like a bird to its mountain? See the wicked bracing their bow, they are fixing their arrows on the string, to shoot upright men in the dark. Foundations once destroyed, what can the just do? The Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord whose throne is in heaven. His eyes look down on the world, his gaze tests mortal men. The Lord tests the just and the wicked, the lover of violence he hates. He sends fire and brimstone on the wicked, he sends a scorching wind as their lot. The Lord is just and loves justice. The upright shall see his face. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The sufferings of this life cannot be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us in the life to come. The Lord tested his chosen ones as gold tested by fire. He has received them forever as a sacrificial offering. Lord, hear a cause that is just. Pay heed to my cry. Turn your ear to my prayer. No deceit is on my lips. From you may my judgment come forth. Your eyes discern the truth. You search my heart. You visit me by night. You test me, and you find in me no wrong. My words are not sinful as are men's words. I kept from violence because of your word. I kept my feet firmly in your paths. There was no faltering in my steps. I am here and I call. You will hear me, O God. Turn your ear to me. Hear my words. Display your great love, you whose right hand saves your friends from those who rebel against them. Guard me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the violent attack of the wicked. My foes encircle me with deadly intent. Their hearts tight shut, their mouths speak proudly. They advance against me and now they surround me. Their eyes are watching to strike me to the ground as though they were lions ready to claw or like some young lion crouched in hiding. Lord, arise. Confront them. Strike them down. Let your sword rescue my soul from the wicked. Let your hand, O Lord, rescue me from men, from men whose reward is in this present life. You give them their fill of your treasures. They rejoice in abundance of offspring and leave their wealth to their children. As for me... 
in my justice I shall see your face and be filled, when I awake, with the sight of your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord tested his chosen ones as gold tested by fire. He has received them forever as a sacrificial offering. I have known tribulations and distress, but in your commands I have found consolation. A reading from the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. There is treasure we possess in earthen vessels to make it clear that its surpassing power comes from God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way possible, but we are not crushed. Full of doubts, we never despair. We are persecuted, but never abandoned. We are struck down, but never destroyed. Continually we carry about in our bodies the dying of Jesus, so that in our bodies the life of Jesus may also be revealed. While we live, we are constantly being delivered to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our mortal flesh. Death is at work in us, but life in you. We have that spirit of faith of which the scripture says, Because I believed, I spoke out. We believe, and so we speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will raise us up along with Jesus, and place both us and you in his presence. Indeed, everything is ordered to your benefit, so that the grace bestowed in abundance may bring greater glory to God, because they who give thanks are many. We do not lose heart, because our inner being is renewed each day, even though our body is being destroyed at the same time. This present burden of our trial is light enough, and earns for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. We do not fix our gaze on what is seen, but on what is unseen. What is seen is transitory. What is unseen lasts forever. Indeed, we know that when the earthly tent in which we dwell is destroyed, we have a dwelling provided for us by God, a dwelling in the heavens, not made by hands, but to last forever. We groan while we are here, even as we yearn to have our heavenly habitation envelop us. This it will, provided we are found clothed and not naked. While we live in our present tent, we groan, we are weighed down because we do not wish to be stripped naked, but rather to have the heavenly dwelling envelop us, so that what is mortal may be absorbed by life. God has fashioned us for this very thing and has given us the Spirit as a pledge of it. Therefore we continue to be confident. We know that while we dwell in the body we are away from the Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight. I repeat, we are full of confidence and would much rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Blessed are you when men curse you and persecute you, and speak every evil against you because of me. Rejoice, be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for the sake of justice, for your reward will be great in heaven. A reading from a sermon by St. Augustine, Bishop. The day I became a bishop, a burden was laid on my shoulders for which it will be no easy task to render an account. The honors I receive are for me an ever-present cause of uneasiness. Indeed, it terrifies me to think I could take more pleasure in the honor attached to my office, which is where its danger lies, than in your salvation, which ought to be its fruit. This is why being set above you fills me with alarm, whereas being with you gives me comfort. Danger lies in the first, salvation in the second. To be honest with you, my obligations involve me in so much turmoil that I feel as though I were tossed by storms on a great ocean. When I remember by whose blood I have been redeemed, this thought brings me peace, as though I were entering the safety of a harbor, and I am consoled, as I carry out the arduous duties of my own particular office, by the blessings which we all have in common. By finding my chief joy, therefore, in the redemption, which I share with you, and not in my office, which has placed me over you, I shall the more truly be your servant, and so not only fulfill the Lord's command, but also show myself not ungrateful to him for making me your fellow servant. For my Redeemer has a claim upon my love, and I do not forget how he questioned Peter and asked, Do you love me, Peter? Then feed my sheep. He asked this once, then again, then a third time. He inquired about his love, and then he gave him work to do. For the greater one's love is, the easier is the work. 
how shall I repay the Lord for all the blessings he has given me? I could say, perhaps, that I repay him by feeding his sheep. But even though I do this, it is not really I who do it, but the grace of God within me. So when all that I do is the gift of God's grace, how can I possibly repay him? As a matter of fact, I hope to be repaid myself, and this for, for the very reason that I love him freely and feed his sheep. But, but, you may ask, if I feed his sheep because I love him freely, how can I demand payment for feeding them? It is indeed unthinkable to ask for a recompense for love freely given, unless that recompense is the loved one himself. But even if feeding his sheep could repay him for redeeming me, what could repay him for having made me his shepherd? To be a good shepherd, I depend entirely on his grace, for without his help I should be a very bad one. There is so much evil in me. Pray then that I may not be a bad shepherd, but a good one. And for you, my brothers, I also pray and warn you against failing to cooperate with the grace you receive from God. Make my ministry a fruitful one. You are God's garden, and you should therefore welcome the laborer who does the visible work of paint, planting and watering the seed, even though the growth comes from one who works invisibly within you helping me both by your prayers and by your obedience, for then it will be a pleasure for me not to preside over you, but to serve you. He was a true martyr who shed his blood for the name of Christ. Fearless of the threats of judges and indifferent to the worldly honors, he attained the kingdom of heaven. The Lord guided the just man on the right path and showed him God's kingdom. Fearless of the threats of judges and indifferent to worldly honors, he attained the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. God our Father, enable us who honor the memory of St. Januarius to share with him the joy of eternal life. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks. <laughs> 